Hey, everyone. Welcome back to an ed- another episode of Built in Ohio. JP, welcome to, sh- welcome to the show. So glad that you're able to join us. Uh, you and Jobs Ohio and the entire Team Ohio have been in the news so much for a ton of big wins that I know you all have been working really hard on. But to start, why don't we kind of just kind of set the stage for what what is Jobs Ohio? How do you work with government? How do you work with industry? Um, and just what is the mechanism for the actual organization in of itself? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it very much. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, Jobs Ohio is Ohio's private economic development corporation. It's a unique economic development platform in the United States of America. Uh, it's unique for four primary elements. Any one of the elements wouldn't make it completely unique, but the four com- combination of the four elements make it very, very unique and a competitive advantage for the state. First is we're private. Uh, we're a 501c4 2011. Essentially, the, the state government working with the legislature spun out the Ohio Department of Development, privatized it. Privatizing is, gives us a competitive advantage because we can negotiate with these companies and we can keep their private information private. Uh, because they don't want to share it with the financial markets or their competitors until they're ready to share it. It also lets us move uh, quickly. We can move at their pace, at the pace of the business and the marketplace. Uh, Sometimes governments don't move quite as quickly, as you know. Uh, That's the first attribute, being private. Second attribute is uh, stable funding, Uh, stable and independent funding. Most state-level economic development uh, organizations are funded through the state budget, Uh, As you know, Ohio is a control state. We control the distribution of spiritus liquors. Uh, And in 2013, Jobs Ohio went to the bond markets, raised $1.4 billion, deposited that into the general fund of the state, and in exchange, uh, secured the rights to distribute Ohio's spiritus liquors and use the profits to fund economic development. So those stable funds, again, allow us to move quickly, allow us to work creatively, uh, but always producing deals that deliver a return on investment to Ohio citizens. Uh, The third attribute, so the first two, uh, not-for-profit, private not-for-profit, independent, stable funding. And third is how we go into the marketplace. Uh, most of our Midwestern uh, partners around around the American Midwest, most of those states are dominated by one major industry or by one large metropolitan area. As you know, Ohio is unique in that we have city states, uh, big cities, Cleveland, Columbus and Cincinnati, medium sized cities like Dayton, my hometown and Toledo, small hallmark towns, micropolitans all over our state and wide open spaces. Uh, And uh, each of them are unique and different. Uh, And so we go into that marketplace through regional partnerships. We have six regional partners. So we're able to go from a state level right down to the granular granular level very quickly through our Jobs Ohio network. And and frankly, companies and families locate to a metropolitan area. They don't necessarily say, we're going to go to Ohio and any place in Ohio will do. They pick a metro area. So it's very important that those metropolitan areas are represented by organizations that know them best. And uh, those organizations, are their boards are made up of stakeholders in their communities. So again, a competitive advantage there. And finally, the fourth attribute at the center is our team. Uh, Most economic development professionals are generalists that are very passionate and committed uh, about their community, about their state. And that's probably the foundational element that is you have passion uh, and knowledge about your community. But we pull our economic development professionals from the private sector, from the sectors that we focus on for Ohio's economy. And we pull them from the private sector and then we turn them into economic development professionals. So they have a passion and intelligence and knowledge about the state and about the community that they live in, but they also have deep sector experience. So when we're negotiating a complex economic development deal, and that's what we often do, they're complex, uh, that we do it with industry knowledge uh, at the table. As an example, when we were negotiating with Intel, we had close to 70 years of semiconductor experience at the negotiating table with us. So we were able to go through a full gambit and understand what was important to them, maybe what wasn't so important, where to put our emphasis, and we were able to speak their language. Again, those four factors combined, private entity, stable, uh, stable and independent funding, 
a statewide network of with regional partners and then a team with private sector experience those things combined there's nothing else in the country like that jobs ohio platform yeah and and i don't think uh anyone can argue with the success because it it, it seems like there's a win we hear from team ohio it's intel it's honda lg ford there's all these wins that keep bubbling and popping up um and they, they just keep coming. One of my favorite anecdotes that, that I love to share, share with folks is, uh, you know, like a lot of people, I watch CNBC, have it on in the background as I'm working in the office. Uh, and it seems like every day Jim Cramer is mentioning Ohio and all the executives he's talking to across the country and I'm sure world uh, that are mentioning Ohio as a destination for just economic development and expansion and growth and opportunity. Um, and that leads me to kind of a, a, a second question along these lines is I've heard you uh, in, in a lot of speeches and a lot of remarks, talk about Ohio's generational opportunity. What does that mean? And how did that generational opportunity kind of come about? Because these things don't necessarily pop up overnight. Certainly the creation of Jobs Ohio is one of those keys, um, but that's been around for a number of years at this point, and it continues to grow, continues to evolve and continues to build. But what does that generational opportunity mean for, for I guess, you personally, and then our state as a whole? So it's a it's not a scientifically coined term. Uh, we were trying to, you know, myself and my team were trying to characterize the nature of what we saw was getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. And and as we talked about it, and again, it was the confluence of the flight from the coasts as more companies and people were leaving um, uh, it, through the pandemic when we we had this notion that something was off with the supply chain and that there there was likely to be a shifting of capital formation as a result. Uh, and I think strong leadership, pro-business, uh, pro-workforce leadership in the DeWine Husted administration, uh, combined with this amazing business climate that wasn't there 25 years ago. And so we were looking at the confluence of all these attributes and uh, it's something that none of us had seen since we had been paying attention. For me, it was, you know, I moved here, uh, you know, right before I was in high school with an Air Force family in the late 70s. And it seemed like uh, for me, there was a litany of bad news. Companies leaving, layoffs, people moving west, people moving south. NAFTA took, uh, you know, more and more of those companies south of the border. Then in the offshoring to Asia and the OOs and the teens. Uh it was a steady drumbeat. So we said, we really haven't seen th this confluence of opportunity since any time in our adult memory. So then we said, that's a generational thing. We haven't seen it in a generation, at least in a generation. So what, what it means for someone like me personally is, you know, I pick, picked and chose to live in Ohio, uh, bring up my family in Ohio, build a professional uh, career in Ohio. And I always, everywhere I traveled, and I'm sure this is the same for you and many others is either their family members or business associates say, why do you live in Ohio? Or uh, is it Iowa? Just, you know, no real acknowledgement, understanding of the value proposition that we saw and we lived with every day. And in with, you might not know this, but before the announcement of Intel, before counting Intel, and you mentioned Ford and Honda, before any of those in 2011, in the 10th year of Jobs Ohio's existence, Working with our regional partners and the DeWine Houston administration, uh, we had already, through our programs and various support, supported the creation of more jobs, more payroll, through more successful economic development projects than we'd ever seen in the history of the organization going back to 2011. And that's before all these big deals. So we saw this momentum coming. But what these big deals have done, in particular Intel, it essentially pushed that value proposition to the fore. And so, you know, it was we knew about it because we saw the momentum building up and we were living it every day. Uh, but it was always frustrating that we knew uh, the marketplace still referenced us as a as a Rust Belt state or a flyover state or even worse, just not even considering mm -hmm. Ohio or where it was. So um, it, it just means that uh, I believe and I think the evidence will show uh, that we're ushering in a, a new age of economic momentum that we haven't seen in decades. Yeah, absolutely. And something you mentioned a bit ago is is the, uh, the diversity of the Ohio business climate, where 
so many different sectors and industries exist here. And I know Jobs Ohio has your 10 sectors and, and 10 sector strategies um, to build that industrial diversity. Could you talk a little bit about what that means? And, you know, perhaps with a bit of a tech lens, because one of the interesting things about our space is, you know, tech is in every every sector, every industry, every business. So whether it's manufacturing, healthcare, financial services, it's manufacturing tech, fintech, health tech. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just talking about that 10 sector strategy, what that means, um, and then how maybe is kind of a, an add on uh things like semiconductors or the space industry, some of these emerging industries that are really growing um, as they're coupled with things that Ohio has been good at for a really long time. Great, great question. So, so first a, a diverse economy is important and Ohio has focused on intentionally becoming more diverse. So again, we're not reliant on the economic cycle of any one industry. And so Jobs Ohio does not focus on the whole economy. We focus, like you said, on nine private sector industries and one public sector, which we added in 2019, the military and federal sector. Uh, and, in, and in fact, uh, uh, you know, I think you know what the sectors are, but advanced manufacturing, logistics, distribution, financial services, automotive, information technology, energy chemicals, healthcare, food processing and agriculture, aerospace and aviation, and military and federal. Mm -hmm. And that really, you know, the sub the subcategories of those sectors are enormous. Uh, and, and so Jobs Ohio doesn't deal with the whole economy. We deal with those sectors. And, and if, the, if a company uh, has the ability to go and operate in another state or another country versus being there because of the population, as an example, movie theater, gas station, a hospital, we don't get involved in population driven the population driven economy, we get involved with the tradable economy. Yeah. And so those sectors, we focused on those sectors uh, fiercely over the last 11 years. And as a result, at least according to Moody's, uh, the state of Ohio has the ninth most diverse state economy in America. It's the most diverse economy in the Midwest, and it is becoming more diverse at a faster rate than our friends on the coasts, our state economy friends on the coast. Uh, who cares, right? I mean, you might ask, why does that matter? Well, it matters if you uh, want to be a vibrant state, have a vibrant economy through the ups and downs of economic cycles in other challenges. And there are always economic cycles. And so I, I you know, we're not inoculated from recession or depression here, but if you look at economies that are more diverse, they tend to absorb and weather challenging economic times better and stronger than states that are reliant on one or two major e economies. So uh, we have a, a diverse economy. We're becoming more diverse uh, every month, uh, and it's a, a source of our strength. What goes into creating a, a new, you know, sector for Ohio? And I think of semiconductors as an example where, you know, historically it's, it's, it's been built in the Bay Area or shipped overseas, and those are starting to come back. But, you know, I just think of what, what has to be such a monumental task because it's not just dropping in, you know, one company, it's the supply chain, it's the education to make sure all of that can, you know, filter up and, and, and tells the one example being, you know, they need employees, thousands of employees that have very specialized uh, talents and degrees. Uh, so, so what goes into, you know, all of that as whether it's semiconductors or building out things like space and, and an aerospace um, for, for you all, but then also kind of, you know, the Ohio economy as a whole. Well, first of all, you, you need people in the state and leaders in the state that have a vision and a belief and then take the actions necessary over time to bring that vision and belief into reality. And I think you mentioned a few items out Intel, the semiconductor industry, I'll call that opportunistic. You know, we, we have limited resources and we're focusing on our sectors. And, you know, we don't have, we did not have a, a vibrant semiconductor manufacturing infrastructure in our state. So we, we were not likely and we were not investing a significant amount of resource into pursuing opportunities like this. But this one came to us. And when it came to us, uh, we, meaning Team Ohio, we rallied Jobs Ohio, our regional partners, Governor DeWine. Lieutenant Governor Husted, uh, Director Mahalik, 
every one of their department levels, because it, it was an all hands on deck, the EPA, the Department of Transportation, et cetera, and the legislative leadership mm -hmm. all rallied. No one had to be, well, we did have to do some discussing and, and convincing because uh, early on, uh, the, the, the deal came to us, the opportunity came to us on May 3rd. And it came to us because a local elected official in Lorain County uh, heard that Intel was looking for a new plant in, in the continental U.S. and sent an email to Pat Gelsinger. Mm -hmm. Pat Gelsinger responded, said, hey, go look at Ohio. Before we finish our process, go look at Ohio. And Intel's deal team came in, looked at, uh, uh, looked at Northeast Ohio, didn't have a site that fit. Uh, because our network is so tightly coupled together, we communicate and work together well. The deal immediately came back up through our network to the JO. We scoured the state. We had three days to respond to a very complex RFI. Hmm. We found the one site that complied with the, the requirements. We submitted the, the information uh, back to Intel and it piqued their interest enough to say, well, let's come back and learn a little bit more. So that particular, the semiconductor sector was opportunistic, but we did show that at, after a decade of really working together, uh, communicating, aligning our interests with the, the, our state partners and our regional partners, we were able to move quickly and get to yes. And we didn't have to sit down and strategize. We just all knew we were going to get to yes. We were not gonna air dirty laundry. We were gonna get it done. And in the end, what Intel told us uh, was that Ultimately, why they picked us, we didn't have the richest deal. There were 39 other com competitors that they believed and trusted that we would deliver on our promises. Hmm. And, and they were right, and we will. So that's that's the semiconductor industry. Now, we're, now we are pursuing and we are being pursued, not just by supply chain partners and fellow travelers, but other semiconductor companies hmm. are now... Uh, seeking and at least putting Ohio in the competitive space so we can compete. We're not going to win them all, but we're going to continue to win. Yeah. The other, the other, the other uh, industries, the other diversification uh, is because communities or major stakeholders uh, have decided that this is an opportunity for Ohio or for their, for their institution. As an example, uh, we are, we are a leader. We uh, have the national center uh, for autonomous mobility located in Springfield, Ohio. That just didn't happen because we submitted a proposal a year ago. That happened because 12 years ago, 13 years ago, uh, the Dayton Development Coalition and stakeholders and partners from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and individuals like Joe Zeese, who was at the De Dayton Development Coalition at the time, decided to do some research, bring together a team, apply their knowledge that they had about the market that the Air Force was driving. So, you know, this would be a great location for the exploration and test for unmanned aerial vehicles, drones, and uh, eVTOLs, electric vehicle uh, takeoff and landing aircraft, and started engaging with the state, with agencies at the state, uh, with the federal government and the FAA to get a line of sight clearance. And 10 years later, there is agreements between the Air Force Research Lab and companies in, in Springfield, and, and we have six or seven unmanned aerial vehicle companies, some of the most well-known in the world, doing test and evaluation at, at an air airfield in Springfield, Ohio, and we were just designated uh, and, and did a ribbon cutting this summer on the National Center for Autonomous Mobility. So that was intentional, and, and I think, I believe, sometime within the next 12 to 24 months, we'll be making an announcement that a a large manufacturer is going to build those type of aircraft and air vehicles in the state of Ohio. Uh, you mentioned space. You know, we, we have a, a wonderful resource uh, out in Northeast Ohio with NASA. Uh, and again, uh, stakeholders like the Ohio State University, uh, our state leadership and Governor DeWine, Lieutenant Governor Houston, Joe Zeese, the team at the Dayton Development Coalition and at Jobs Ohio, that there's there's uh, an opportunity here for us uh, to play a role in space. Uh, and one of those roles with the space station is doing agricultural, virtual agricultural tests <laughs> and essentially a live lab, digital lab that mimics the space station. Uh, and so we pursued that with our partners uh, and we're successful. Uh, so that it's called NanoRacks. It's not going to Houston. 
uh, or to Colorado Springs or to Southern California, where a lot of the different space industry and uh, element and component manufacturers are, they're going to come to Columbus, Ohio. So these things are intentional. We've been de developing a diversified economy intentionally. It won't stop because uh, the economy and innovation and invention and creation constantly evolve. And so we're going to continue to evolve and, and be ahead of the evolution curve. Like we, frankly, like is in our legacy and our history. I, I love that. And I love the intentionality as you so well described, because, you know, each of the areas that we've discussed, whether it's, it's semiconductors and manufacturing or drones, autonomous vehicles, agriculture and, and, and space, uh, it's all areas that matter. And, and there's a lot of shiny objects in the economy, especially in tech uh, that you look at and you're not quite exactly sure if it ever really will matter or if it's just people chasing kind of dollars. But um, everything you all have been champions of and working on and the team has that expertise behind um, it's areas that matter to Ohio with it. We have a history and legacy at, and also that matter, frankly, to, to the United States and just our competitiveness as yes. the global economy becomes even more complex. Uh, look, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. This is more than just an Ohio phenomenon or uh, while Ohio is leading the way for the American Midwest and for this yeah. phenomenon. Uh, but this, this is uh, a national security implications. Yeah. Uh, our, our national economy needs to have those strategic sectors uh, either here in our country or with uh, allies that share our values. Uh, and I, I believe that Ohio is probably at the heart of what American values are. And you can see that industry is voting with their with their investment, with their capital investment and in their future. So it's it's a great indicator uh, for Ohio's value in the context of the American economy, but also the global economy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we'll segue now to kind of the, the end of our conversation. These are some fun questions, kind of quick, uh, that we ask all of our guests. And it's just, it's just fun to get different perspectives from someone from Dayton and Cleveland and Toledo and Cincinnati, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so the first one is, uh, JP, what's a challenge that you're working to solve? So this could be, you know, something big in the day to day and, you know, land in the Intel deal, or it could be something management related and kind of, uh, you know, more kind of, you know, not uh, making headlines, but just something that's really, you know, important to you as the president CEO of Jobs Ohio. So, so I, I think my most important role in, in my current position is to make sure that our team and our network and our stakeholders have the information that they need, uh, that the processes are in place where there can be regular communication so we can drive alignment. Because when we have a, a smart, effective strategy, uh, and we have alignment amongst the key stakeholders in our state, meaning the state government, Jobs Ohio, regional partners, and industry, academia, and local government. The more we can drive alignment around this broader vision and communicate that, uh, there's nothing that can stop the state, you know, barring some global economic collapse. There's nothing that can stop us except, yeah. uh, except us and our yeah. ability and willingness to lean in. Yeah. And that's where, as, as you said earlier, you know, leadership matters and, uh, all of this momentum, it doesn't happen without leadership uh, across multiple organizations and, and, and places. Um, so second question, what's a favorite read, listen, or watch? This could be a book, a podcast, or a show. It could be very work-related or something that you use uh, to disconnect at the end of the day with family. <laughs> you know, I, I am very uh, fa focused on my family. I've got four boys. Uh, two of them are away at college. Two of them are seniors in high school. We've got three dogs. We, we, we picked Ohio. Carmen and I picked Ohio because we could have that, we could have that family life and still pursue uh, a business success. So I usually unwind by, I, I try to spend time with Carmen and just talk to Carmen about my day, talk to the boys, you know, they're applying to colleges, they're dealing with life as seniors in high school. And, and I, 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 I try to stay connected to them because they communicate on things like Snapchat. And so I try to stay engaged and communicate with them where they're going to be watching and listening. But sometimes I don't like the things that I see. And sometimes it's the things that I see that they're putting out there. Yeah. But the, it's mainly communicating with my family and friends, uh, you know, in my in the off time that I have. Yeah. And uh, I know college basketball season's coming up or I guess has just started. So that's a, yes. I'm, yes, I'm sure yes. that's another popular one. Uh, no and, secret there. I'm a, I'm a Dayton Flyer fan yeah. and uh, Flyers are supposed to be good. But my I, my two older boys play for Clemson. Yeah. So for the first time, I do have a 
and now a favorite team that's not the Dayton Flyers, but Dayton Flyers are right, you know, close yeah. second. Yeah, got got a root for family, and I think uh, one of Kirk Curbstreet's sons play for yeah. football, but plays for Clemson as well. I so think both, both, Ohio I, thought both, I thought both of the twins are. Walk-on. I think so. Yeah, and then yeah. I think there's one at Ohio State, and then maybe another one at St. X is playing quarterback. So. Right. Uh, it's the, my the Ohio. Oldest to... know, my oldest son knows knows them. Right? Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's fun. Um, another fun one. Another fun question. Our third one, but uh, I guess this is our Powerball winning question. But if, if you had a hundred million dollars to to solve a, an issue, um, what what would you put it towards? Uh, you know, not necessarily venture investing, but just more of a you know a big issue that's out in society. Where, where would you put a hundred million dollars to to work towards solving? Well, see, now I've got my my personal and my job right. hat. I, I mean, I think a hundred million dollars right now. Uh, I would leverage it to borrow more, and I would uh, develop these strategic mega sites uh, to prepare them so that we can get the next Intel, the next Ford, the next Honda, the next LG, the next very large mega project because our pipeline is filled with them. So theoretically, that would be good for everyone. It would be good for the industry and the economy and theoretically good for me, too. Yeah. Uh, so w- with with every hat that I own, I think that's where you put your capital right now is in, in the state of Ohio in, in developing sites and talent. That's I think there's a big future in that. Yeah, that's a great answer. And then our final one, which is kind of a two part. But favorite place in Ohio uh, and then secondarily, which I guess could be th- this as well, but your favorite meal in Ohio. So you're bringing some folks into the state to show off Ohio, you know, giving them the recruiting pitch to build their next mega site. Um, where, where are you taking them for a, for a meal? So I'm, I'm an other Ohio guy. You know, I'm my favorite place in Ohio. I'm sitting in it right now and it's yeah. my home. Yeah. I love the I love where I live. I love the community of Kettering that I live in and the broader Dayton area. And one of the great parts of the job for me is just getting to see and be part of all of Ohio, seeing all these communities and, and meeting all, all different kind of people. And people in Cleveland are different from Cincinnati yep. and Columbus. And that's really cool. But, you know, it's like a family. It's like a cousin. They're, they're, they have a lot of things that are the same, but a lot of things that are different and unique. Uh, but in terms of restaurant, I love mom and pop restaurants. I, I, uh, I really enjoy going to them. I have my favorites here in the Dayton area. When people come here, I like to take them to either the Oakwood Club, which is an old school steakhouse, or uh, Mama De Salvo's, which is an Italian run by an Italian immigrant family. I think that they're now in their third or fourth generation mom and pop. It's in a little strip mall in Kettering. Uh, uh, great Italian food. So those those are my two places. All right. Well, the Mama De Salvo's that's a, that's a new one for for me in my travels. So I know where I'll be stopping next time I'm in. Uh, you know, I better get a phone call if you're here. <laughs> for sure. Well, JP, this has been fantastic. I've enjoyed the conversation. I've enjoyed following the work that you and all of Team Ohio have been up to. Uh, anything that we didn't want to talk about that you'd like to to plug or mention, or how can folks learn more about you or Jobs Ohio or anything you want to to share at this point? Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity, by the way. I've enjoyed watching what you've been doing out there in, in the ecosystem. It's very valuable. Um, so I would just tell people that are uh, that live here to get involved in your you know local economic development organization or one of the regional organizations. That's really that's really what makes Ohio unique and special is we get involved and we contribute to things that are bigger or greater than just us. Yeah. And I think the, the practice of doing that over the last decade really going dating back probably before I moved here. That's a unique attribute that we have. We work together well. Uh, Democrats, I believe, in my experience, work well with Republicans. We find areas of common ground and we work together. So get involved, stay involved. If you want to learn more about Jobs Ohio, you know, we've got a website that's got everything you could possibly want to know about us and every deal we've ever done. Uh, It's uh, jobsohio.com. And I'm happy to get it if someone wants to email me directly. Um, I'm happy to respond and correspond. Great. Well, JP, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for the conversation. And again, thanks for the leadership and and, and everything you and the team have been doing um, to, you know, help build Ohio. This is Built in Ohio podcast, um, but it, it really is such an exciting time. And uh, you're from Dayton. I'm from Akron. A lot of these similar things from just different parts of, of Ohio's corners. Um, it's really a fun time to be in Ohio. And uh, as, as every time I talk to someone Jobs Ohio, you know, I feel like every conversation ends with like, just stay tuned. More is coming. So it's coming. Uh, it's yeah, so it's, it's an exciting time. So JP, yes, thanks so much for joining. We really appreciate it.
Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate what you're doing.